Today we're gonna to show you guys how to assemble a truss. So here we have our truss design and we have kind of our, our four key parts. We have our bottom cord, we have our two top cords, and then with any truss, you're gonna have some sort of webbing in the middle. Now for a real house, you're gonna have something much more elaborate and a lot more pieces than just a single post in the middle. Uh, but for the purpose of our class, it, uh, it'll work just fine for your model houses. So where we're going to start is we have some two by eight pieces already cut and ready to go. And what's nice about this plan that we made is we get to lay these pieces right on top of the plan um, and we can get our measurements right off of that. So that's one of the nice things about making a design to full scale. Uh, is we get to use that in making what we want. So right here, uh, I got two marks going as far as where our truss, uh, our bottom cord kind of starts and ends, I should say. And you guys probably can't see those very good there, but right there, I got two marks. And then down on this side, I got have two marks. So you can draw a straight line uh, in between those two. Some of you are gonna be good enough to just freehand it and make a nice, clean, freehanded line. I am not that good, so I'm just gonna use a tiny little straight edge, um, which is a little piece of board um, left over from a different part of the house. So I'm gonna line that up. I'm gonna mark that down. You can see I connected those lines. And then if you're working at home doing this, we can use these, uh, a pair of tin snips, which works well enough to cut through. Okay, so there I got my one cut, and then down on this side as well. If you're working here in the lab, or you will be working in the lab the next class period, uh, of course the scroll saws work very well to make some good clean cuts as well. All right, so get rid of those scraps. I can lay this down and check my cuts. Um, and this is where it gets a little tricky because we got to make sure it goes all the way to the ends in both spots. And I like the angle I have here, kind of more so on this one. This guy is just a hair long over here. so. Now I get to trim them up again until we're kind of getting them perfect. So if you end up cutting this too short, what's gonna happen is your truss might not actually fit on top of your house. If you cut this too short, it, uh, it's not gonna go from the end of the outside wall to the other end of the outside wall. So you gotta be pretty picky when you're doing that. I like this piece. I'm going to move this off to the side and we're going to uh, move on to our top cords. So I'm going to lay this down right in between my lines. I'm going to grab my pencil again. This one, I feel pretty good just drawing a straight line down and down here as well. So remember, we want to let our trusses run a little bit long past your outside wall, because here's your outside wall. The reason for that is this is how we get an overhang on our house. Now, not all houses have overhangs, um, but uh, they work pretty well and help keep uh, some of the weather away from your structure, uh, wind and, and rain pretty much. So, uh, so you'll see in a lot of new houses that we uh, they put on uh, some form of overhang. Usually it's between one foot and two foot or uh, anywhere in the middle. Now, what's nice about this one is you can see this one already matches up because it was the other side of this. So the angle I cut here, now I can just flip this over and that should speed up my uh, process a little bit. Takes one cut out of the way. I'm gonna map this one out. I'll cut that. All right, so 
I got my two top plates cut. Uh, I like how they connect there, and I like that they're going in my lines. I can move my bottom cord in, and I think this is going to turn out to be a really nice truss. All right, so you can repeat this over and over again uh, until you get as many trusses as you need. The other thing that you can do is since I took the time to do this and I really like how it turned out, I can simply lay this on top of a new piece and I can just trace my two ends and then I have everything marked and I don't have to spend as much time lining everything up. So, uh, so that works out really well. Uh, and you can do that on your next piece and your next piece. And some students like to cut all of their pieces at once. Um, but I just wanted to show you that trick. It, it might save you some time. Now, when it comes time to assembling these, uh, what we have found in the past is there is a little order that seems to work pretty well. And that is if we glue these guys together first, um, then we kind of lock this top part in. We already liked the angle that these guys made. So we just keep a little pressure on there for our seconds that we need to. And as you can see, I'm getting it off the paper. Some students will glue this on and they'll have it right on the paper, but then when they go to take it off, some of that paper comes with. Um, which then uh, uh, you're essentially starting to destroy your plan. So we don't, uh, we don't want to do that. All right, so I'm going to try to move you guys in just a little closer. There, I think that'll work. Um, all right, so I like where I'm at right here, which is great. And slide, yeah, perfect, okay. And I like that my top cord is going in between the lines. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little mark here. And I'm going to make a little mark here. This is where this portion is going to get glued in. I'm not paying attention to my other one. You can see over here I'm not on my line. That is okay because I'm just worried about this joint right now. So I have that marked out. I'm going to put a little glue on here. It's actually a lot of glue, but uh, it'll still work. And now I'm going to put this in so it matches up with those lines. Keep some pressure on it. Let that glue cool down. And now we have that portion of it as well. So. All right. So I like this portion here. I like this portion here. Now we're going to take care of our other corner. So we'll slide you over. All right, sorry, that's a little crooked. So I like this over here, so I'm gonna keep a little pressure there. As I bring this guy up and I put this guy in place, now our truss is looking really, really good. And I'm gonna mark that one out too. So when I glue that one in, I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna go there. And this will help keep everything in order and in line. One of the common mistakes is that if we don't get this nice and perfect, uh, what will happen is from one truss to the next, you might have peaks that are higher. Uh, you might have slopes that are different. And uh, all that is because we didn't take the time to get our truss uh, nice and perfect from the start. So right there, that is looking really good. I'm gonna bring you up just a little more. Perfect, okay? Now, if we do this absolutely right, and if your plan was drawn, we should be able to, what I just did is I just flipped this truss over and it should fit right in the lines just like that. If you can have that happen, when you go to put your trusses up, everything is going to be absolutely perfect. Now, I know I'm missing one piece here. Uh, once I get this guy glued together, that's when I'll come in and we'll map out this piece here. So I'll actually use this flat part 
to go up against the bottom because that'll save me one cut. And then kind of map that out to the point where those meet. And we'll make a couple of cuts here. We'll cut all the way through here. We will cut this other part down. All right, and then we'll grab our truss and hopefully we are fitting right in. Okay, not too bad. Now, one thing did happen when I pushed this in and that is it wasn't a perfect fit. I almost have it. This side's a little long. So when I did that, it kind of pushed this bottom down. I think you can see here that we're off our line a little bit. This is something that will affect your project as well, because if we're putting a piece in that's too long, it's going to elongate that, and it is going to uh, make your trusses a little taller and your peaks won't line up as well. So I trimmed just the smallest amount off, and now this fits in there really well. So I'm going to put a little glue on each end here. And now I'll be able to fit this guy in there. Okay. Now I realize I just made a mistake and that was I've been doing a great job of marking out where these needed to go and then on this one I didn't. So I'm a little off there, so I'm going to move that before it dries too much. So that was, that was a teacher error right there. Make sure you guys don't make that mistake. There we go. And now I got everything in line. I got my center post in. Should be able to flip this over and fit right in between my lines again. So I'm really happy with this truss. Now I just got to go make a whole bunch more. Good luck to you guys.